So this is our Brooklyn Bridge Park on the left. This is a, a 1 in 20 path, the main walk in. You can see it's quite gentle and the uh, plantings together with that. And these are various projects of our firm, but they show the kinds of places that we're proposing to make uh, uh, in your project. So here we're taking a little bit of a look at the topography. The yellow is where we're piling earth up. This is technically tricky because we're doing it all on the stu structure of a garage, but we've done a lot of that work before. But the notion when we're finished is the thing has a rolling quality to it. You can see the center is still largely open. It's pretty flat and the coming up with grade is at the perimeter for reasons that I explained before. So here you see them starting to come together, the paths, the lawns, the topography. Um, these are just very, very early sketches um, showing you the organization. Um, I think the most untraditional thing that we want to do is we want to just make the very best playgrounds that any park in America has for kids. And that doesn't mean that we won't use any traditional playground equipment. Kids love there's some things that are universal, like, you know, I don't know any kids that don't like swings, for instance. Um, but it can't only be things like swings and slides and things like that. So we put the traditional and more innovative things together. We really want to um, push the idea of kind of exciting the imagination of children and the feeling. And, you know, um, I'll just tell you a story. A friend of mine, who's an engineer, wanted to see Brooklyn Bridge Park, and he came with his uh, wife, who's a landscape architect, and their five-year-old son. He was extremely well-behaved. But, you know, we're looking at all the kind of areas that were more interesting to adults, and we pulled up to the playground, and we didn't say anything. And he looked over at it, and he just screamed with glee. He, you know, he'd been waiting for an hour. Um, that's the kind of reaction that we want to have out of kids. We want them to be excited. We want them to feel that it's a magnet, and we want to sustain their interest when we get there. But we also see the potential of nature play areas for children as one of those things that encourages uh, this, the stimulating the imagination of children. Um, and these are some examples of how we have used natural material uh, in some of our projects in parks in, um, in New York City and Boston before. Seasonal play, um, we recognize that play is better if there are things to do in the winter that feel good when it's icy and snowy out and things to do in summer where you might even want to, you know, come out there in your bathing suit and um, uh, and run around in water. So the upper upper left is a piece of work by an artist that we might consider working with. His name is Epi Ein. It's just an idea at this point in time that we're exploring. Um, and some of our work in ice and then the notion of a water arbor uh, in the lower right, uh, which is actually in a pro this one's in a project by another landscape architect uh, named George Hargraves and it's down in um, Houston. But you can, these are wind activated, so if it's a super windy day, the jets are different, but you can actually walk through it. You have all this evaporating water around you, and it's a super, in terms of the temperature of your body, it's very cool to be in there. As I said, we embrace the idea of some play equipment as long as it's unique and has high play value. Um, the main thing is that we want to create a plan for the park that is, um, more diverse, more stirred up. As you're walking through, you get to make choices, forks in the path, in the, as you go through about areas that are active and areas that are passive. So it, currently, we have pretty uh, simple division of activity in Daily Buy that's out there. And we're proposing stirring it up, mixing, um, not taking a whole corner of the park and putting in a massive single play area there, but breaking the play up into different types, different levels of activity, and having play be more like a circuit, not everywhere in the park, but in a few different areas, so that we still have places that are away from, from play areas. And, and then here you see some of the elements coming more strictly into focus, where we have gardens and play areas and meadows and lawns, um, rock climbing potentially, ice skating. 
and the character of the overall plan. You can see the connections um, that are being made at the corners and at the edges. Uh, Cancer Survivor Garden uh, remains in its current configuration. And there's a, there is one uh, basic divide in the organization, organization of the park that I want to make clear. There is a diagonal that is more exclusively what we call the passive access. In other words, as a neighbor or as somebody who gets to know the park, you will learn if you walk the um, axis of the park from the lower left to the upper right going towards Randolph or in the other direction, that you're going to encounter less active things to do in that direction. So that means there's a way that you can walk through the park and if you don't want to go near too near a playground or if you just basically want to go on a stroll, you can you can do that. Or on the other axis, of course they cross in the middle, they have to. But on the other axis, there's more active things to do. So if you're there with your grandkids or if you're a parent, you're there, care provider, in some way with children, there's a way that those play elements are also strung together or, or a series of things that you discover as you move through. Those are the, the approximate distribution of what we're calling the play gardens now. Some of them are euphemistically play gardens. They're kind of more traditional playgrounds. And then others truly are gardens for children. And, we're not at all into the development of the details of those yet. This is just a kind of a, a, a pre-schematic planning diagram for the park. Um, we promised you when we were in the public meetings that we would come back early when the design wasn't so far uh, along. We don't have finished renderings or even detailed plans of these areas yet. This is a, a, a point for checking in with you to see if the sense is that we're going in the in the right directions, picnic gardens. We see the potential of rock climbing at the center uh, uh, in, in, in front of the, of the pavilion as a possibility. Um, we would include this, uh, we think, and we also like the idea of a temporary ice ribbon in that area. Um, problem with skating, of course, is what is it in the, in the summer, and we didn't want to have a big um, water area, so we like this idea of this skating ribbon, ribbon which goes away in the summer and just becomes a path, a path that you walk on. And instead of being like a rink that you go around in, this is sort of more a meander, and then potentially that could be an area where we include the outdoor cafe, that the surface, that's the ice, in the winter could have umbrellas and trees nearby, and this is where we could put the cafe element, which is also um, up near the field house. So if the perimeter is united with a rolling topography, the inside is united with a, a series of lawn valleys that you can move through. Um, I don't want to give a big wrap up because there is no wrap up until we've heard from you. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that there is a North uh, Grant Park um, website um, we're just starting to use it again because of the hiatus that we had in the last year, but this is, uh, this is the, um, the website uh, domain, the address, that you can use to stay in touch with the community. Thank you, Michael.